Hey, VC, how we doing? So let's get straight into it. Uh, both what's spinning in the background and uh, why I'm spinning it. So my friend uh, Eddie down in Texas, good dude. Uh, Eddie's physical media talk. So he's been doing the live streams for a while, hanging out, but decided to start his own channel. It's going gangbusters. He hit a uh, hundred subscribers pretty quick, and he's doing a little thing where uh, show five soundtracks. So I figured I'd snuck, sneak that in here. First, starting with something that I'm playing in the background. Now, is this my favorite soundtrack? And not so much a soundtrack, but a score. Um, I'm playing this because, one, it's my one of my favorite uh, score, soundtrack, album covers all time. Because you got a young, yoked Arnold Schwarzenegger and a Brigitte Nielsen uh, pre Flava Flav. But uh, for Eddie, he's a big fan of Ennio Morricone. So uh, that's spit in the background. I got—I don't got to speak at it too much, but it's really clean. It's original, uh, and I'm happy to have it. So uh, a great nerd addition to my collection, and a score I do enjoy. Uh, one of the rarer uh, vinyl records in regards to scores and soundtracks in my collection. So that's spit in the background. Now, if you're already red flagged about. Uh, Soundtracks. Now, I gotta tell you, I got an uh, eclectic array coming in here, but I'll also get down to uh, other things here to wrap it up just because I don't stick to five for my five fresh finds. It's just alliteration. Who doesn't like alliteration? But, um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. So, Tron Legacy. This is the sequel, if you didn't know, uh, in regards to the movie. Uh, that was done by Daft Punk, if you can't tell by the hype sticker. Now, this came out some time ago, 2011-ish, and uh, I didn't buy it at the time. I'm a fan of Daft Punk, but I wasn't just, like, super urgent to buy all their stuff on vinyl, uh, even though I dig it. Now, I probably should have at the time, because there's probably a financial fall-off, but before these finally started catching represses, um, these were hitting, like, the, uh, I think the highest selling one on Discogs hit $400. And now, this is just plain black wax. I don't think it's that important. Uh, I'm in the shrink with hype sticker because I'm that guy. But um, the guts are a less than impressive uh, picture of Daft Punk in kind of a uh, Tron Legacy theme. And also, Tron Legacy theme. To go with the album cover, the earlier ones, they had like a translucent blue and a different blue that went this, and the blue and orange that kind of went with the themes of the good and bad of the movies. But, um... Uh, I didn't want to pay $100 for this. I didn't want to pay three figures for this record. So it's one of those where uh, patience paid off, and uh, it finally caught a repressing. This is a 22 repressing. It's just on black wax. Uh, nothing crazy there. Center label, uh, less than impressive either. But uh, good music. I think the score, and I am more of a fan of uh, soundtracks than I am of scores, but I think the style of music, of you know, electronic, EDM, uh, house, trance, all things electronic, right? It's Daft Punk. I shouldn't have to describe Daft Punk or kind of try to come up with those uh, officious terms. Uh, it suits well to a score. So a lot of this is just, you know, uh, non-vocal uh, electronic music. If you wanted to just say epic song, and I don't mean that in a cliche sense where everyone just throws around the term epic all willy-nilly, because, uh, I mean, to a point, it got to a point where, you know, even though cringeworthy so beat to death that cringeworthy as a term is cringeworthy itself. Uh, epic got thrown around willy-nilly, but a truly epic track is Rectifier. I think it comes on a little over two minutes, but uh, it builds to a rapid crescendo. So if you want to check out anything on this album, uh, Rectifier would be a good place to start if you wanted to catch a vibe. But uh, happy to have found that recently. Uh, like I say... Uh, for a fraction of the price, I'm super stoked. So, and this is actually a five fresh find here. So I got this today. I've been trading in stuff, purging clutter around the house of knickknacks and tchotchkes that could sell the local store as well as, uh, as well as thinning the herd on the vinyl collection. So I still have standing credit at a local store and this is actual five fresh find I bought today. But um, here's one I've been sitting on for a while. And I mean, this dude, this dates back to COVID days where Things are just crazy in the restaurant industry, and I was trying to put out videos, but struggle to do so. So if you can't tell by the whacked out psychedelic cover, uh, it good indication of the style of music by the album cover alone. So this is one where you know they say you can't judge a book by the cover, or sometimes a a, a record by its jacket. You can definitely do so with this. But as to read a hype sticker, because we all know that hype stickers are 100% accurate and have never lied to us. 
The Sunshine Makers, original soundtrack album composed and performed by the <clears throat> Heliocentrics, features full-length versions of unique tracks featured in the Netflix documentary uh, charting the story of the 1960s LSD manufacturers Nicholas Sand and Tim Scully, yada, 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 blah, blah. Uh, bland back black wax, uh, uh, boring uh, center label, so that's neither here nor there. But this is at times like jazz fusion uh eccentric weird whacked out jazz meets uh, psychedelia uh and then just rock and jam outs it has ups and downs it goes on a wave um i enjoyed the documentary and it's not that i can't return to documentaries because there are a multitude of documentaries i've watched multiple times but uh this definitely is easier to return to uh via music and for whatever reason i don't think this ever caught repress so I think there's a, a couple that are slightly less uh, expensive, but for whatever reason, this has just been creeping up in price for a couple years. So if you stream this and dig this, I don't know how uh, apt they're going to be to you know, repressing a weird soundtrack for a now outdated uh, documentary on Netflix. So uh, if you do investigate this and you think it's in your wheelhouse, it might be a better time than not to purchase this so uh, not that i'm encouraging people to participate in fomo you know because the fear of missing out gets us all in the vinyl community sooner or later so and now this would be the antithesis of this because i think a repress has come along the lines uh the original 1972 pressings of these uh are pretty pricey um over a hundred dollars i don't know how how much they uh tap out but it's not a a run-of-the-mill repress now, there's a couple of these. i just looking it up because I was trying to see what year this is pressed, and I think it's like a 2014 pressing, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, for whatever reason, uh, there's a couple of these that are floating around cheater, cheaper. But a lot of these, people are asking more money than I think it's worth. And not so much in the quality of music, but in the fact that now, over the past couple of years, a couple, people di a couple different companies have put out a couple different represses. So when you see some people asking $150, $165 for this, uh, I don't think it'd be prudent to go out there and drop a bunch of money of this on this if you stream it and you like it, because I think you'll have more opportunities in the future. Uh, that being said, this is the soundtrack for uh, the film Morning of the Earth. I was perturbed by the uh, hype sticker being right in the center of this business, so I snuck it on the back. And to, once again, uh, go through the redundancies of reading the hype sticker. Familiar, dusty, psychedelic, Laurel Canyon-triggered numbers filtered through the skilled hands of Aussie musicians. Uh, reissue of the soundtrack from the 1971 Australian surf classic directed, uh, directed by uh, Albert uh, Falzon. Now, yes, there's surf undertones, but is this acoustic at times? Uh, progadelic at times? Um, jamming, rocking at times? Outright psychedelic at times? Yes, more so than just being like a, what pe some people might dismiss as a light and poppy, um, non-registering album. You know, a lot of people just don't get down with the surf music, and I, and I get that. But it's not like um, mild, light versions of Ventures music. Uh, there's a little bit more gusto to this, and I think this is an album worth pursuing. Uh, center label and wax is nothing that important, but I did like the... Um, very retro style vibed uh, inner sleeve here that looks way more muted on camera but uh, has neat um, a neat aesthetic in person but so that's one you might want to stream uh, pretty dope uh, I haven't seen the movie in years and years so I'm probably overdue to revisit this but uh, for whatever reason this has been creeping up in price so either snag one before they keep on going up or, or um, just wait I, they've caught multiple represses, represses over the past couple years it's got to be coming around again. but So there's another soundtrack in the mix. And not so much a fresh find uh, in the sense that I bought it recently, but I haven't shown in the VC. I probably bought that not too, not too long before the accident. So Shaft in Africa. I pulled this out from the records I never got around to showing um, from um, Wilmington, North Carolina. I bought right before the job. Uh, but Shaft in Africa. This completes the trilogy. Now, when I was flipping with Lavelle and the boys in Chicago, I found a beat-up a beat copy, and I found a bunch of them. And I had a notion that day, because I bought 
Shaft the big score, and I was like, oh man, I could just lock up all three in one day. Let me go and do that, but I was like, nah, patience is a virtue. So let me go and wait now. This has a very discreet punch, and um, one of the corners here has a ding that reeks of someone not knowing to hold a record by the side or bottom of the record, but just kind of dog-eared it. That aside, the, the record's really clean. I'm stoked to have it. Uh, this is a Johnny Pate score, and it's not burdened by being a score, because since it's kind of jazz funk with, you know, uh, African elements, uh, it just really reads as an instrumental album. So the funky jazz bits are just legit cool funky jazz bits that you would listen to independently, even if it wasn't affiliated with a movie. But if you want to break from the repetition, not that this gets repetitious, but the repetition of having just a score, uh, there are a couple tracks here by the four tops that um, are vocal endeavors, including probably my favorite four tops track of all time. And you can see right there, Are You Man Enough? Uh, this is dope. This is probably my favorite. Uh, no, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it definitively. This is my favorite Shaft album. Now, some people are like, oh, that's sacrilegious, probably because they have uh, more of an experience or more of an affinity um, to the original Isaac Hayes. But um, I just think this is better music. Johnny Pate kills it. Um, I'm stoked to find it. So when I was in Wilmington, uh, the first record store I went to, they had a repress of it sealed. It was like freaking 18 bucks or whatever. It's since gone up, but not drastically in the past year or so. But I was like, nah, I'll just be patient. The very next day, I was uh, uh, digging with my buddy at Yellow Dog, and uh, I found this pretty clean. It's got a couple superficial scratches. But nothing affects it. It's got a little dog ear on it or whatever. But a clean white cover. Super stoked for it. So uh, that completes the Shaft collection. And uh, the soundtrack portion of the night. So uh, like I say, I'll, I'll probably sneak in timestamps. Or I don't even know if I said that. But you know, so if anyone wants to bulldoze through soundtracks because that's not their bag. Maybe I can aid in the process of giving you timestamps so you can avoid it. And then we'll get on the next thing here because that's... Technically, five soundtracks shown, but, you know, four fresh finds. But uh, let's get on to the next fresh find, because, you know, my, my uh, it's all up to speculation of whatever uh, uh, the number of five fresh finds is. You know, I just, I just, you know, I like alliteration, so five fresh finds, here we are. Flower Traveling Band, anywhere. So if you don't know this early 70s Japanese psychedelic hard and heavy band, which is oh so legit, that gets on to, like, weird progressive albums like Satori, which I think is an absolute gem, and... Uh, eventually pressed on um atlantic i think uh makeup but this was originally on phillips uh super hard to find uh originals can go for a thousand plus uh i usually don't want to buy bootlegs but if that's all that all is offered i'll do so now i think there is an official repress that came out very recently uh i i don't have that i have this but uh here's the cool beans about this it's on the Phoenix label. This is redundant. You see a lot of Phoenix that has this same cliche label because it has no ties to whatever, uh, what a lot of the Phoenix uh, records are tied to private presses or um, they don't want to catch losses. I don't even know how to get around uh, the logistics of pressing albums that um, belong to other companies. But this is what's cool about this. I didn't realize this when I bought it. It has a uh, less than impressive but still appreciated little insert here. Uh, most of which is in Japanese. I can't read. <clears throat> but here's a little insert. And this is a neat little cool business I wish they did more frequently. It comes with a CD, which is going to make it super easy to uh, give you the rundown. There's anywhere on here, but there's also multiple tracks by the unaccredited, you know, uh, House of the Rising Sun. A, a song that dates back as, uh, as far as the day is long. As well as Louisiana Blues with Muddy Waters, Black Sabbath cover of Black Sabbath, obviously, and King Crimson, 21st Century Schizoid Man, which <clears throat> I'll go ahead and say it. I think that's probably my favorite version of it. But I don't want a bootleg. Obviously, if I could snap my fingers and swap this out for a you know pristine original press for fifteen hundred dollars or so, or you know have this you know twenty spot um, unofficial repress. Obviously, I'd like the um, I like the uh, you know I like the original, but I prefer to fork over a Jackson, you know, undeniably. So in the same wheelhouse, 
another Phoenix record. If you could tell here with the UPC here, this is relatively clear rivers, which is even more expensive than that flower traveling band if you find original. It gets kind of pricey. It gets out there. Um, I can't recall what label this was on. It's neither here nor there. The center label is more of the same, a really cliche redundant uh, center label for Phoenix. Um, this is progressive rocking at times. Um, it's uh, folky, but if it is folky, it's folkadelic. And if it is proggy, it's progadelic. But it's also just a rocking album. Um, this is the type of album that it's a little bit uh, eccentric enough for a person that likes, you know, a myriad of late 60s, early 70s, uh, kind of whacked out fun goodness. Uh, blues rocking and hard rocking and uh, psych tinged and uh, hippie music and, you know, proto metal and proto punk and garage. Uh, now it doesn't go into all those wheelhouses, but it touches on the people that like that type of, uh, you know, those those endeavors. Uh, but it also doesn't offend, you know, the other day my mom enjoyed this album while I was cooking food. So, uh, that's, that's nice. So it's, um, uh, peculiar enough, you know, if you can't tell by the album cover, the album cover suits the music, that, um, not only does it float the boat for someone uh, who likes, uh, oddball music such as me, but it's not so whacked out that, uh, my mom, uh, wouldn't enjoy this album. So, uh, that is lumped two in as one, uh, a couple, uh, Phoenix Records unofficial represses. And once again, would I rather have a multi-thousand dollar record? Indubitably. But uh, if I could throw 20 bucks at a local store and get a sealed, unblemished record um, of something I never thought I'd own, that's, that's the ticket. All right, back on the B-side. No time lost to you, though. Uh, snap of a finger. <clears throat> the last thing to wrap it up here. And uh, hopefully I don't just lose you with uh, it just being one artist because I got three albums here that I'll blow through fairly quick here and hopefully not take up too much of your time. But these span a good period of time, but all uh, seem to tie in flawlessly. So Neil Young Zuma. This is one of those things that, you know, I don't want to get into the whole Grail discussion because, you know, I think a Grail should be something like, say, the two records I just showed but original versions of for... A thousand dollars plus, you know, but you'd like to think that a grail is something that's uh, exp expensive and impossible, but also sometimes a grail is just something that's elusive. And I know someone gave me flack in a comment section, you know, well, I find this record all the time. It's like six dollars and it's perfect every single time. Well, cool beans for you, wherever you live. I got 20 plus Neil Young records for whatever reason. This just eluded me. And I was hanging out on a live stream uh, once upon a time ago. Shout out Rachel, uh, the music man, by the way, is a uh, rebirth like a phoenix tie in Phoenix Records uh, with Rachel's Ghost. So maybe I'll leave a link there if you didn't know. Uh, she's back to streaming again and doing her thing. So when I was banged up and I was in the hospital, I was just hanging out. It was very beneficial because I had a good distraction. But one time, uh, Deep Track Zach, Zach down in Georgia, Georgia way, uh, him and his brother is, uh, are all damn good people in the DC. So I'll leave a link to his channel and, uh, you can check them out if you don't know them. But he said, hey, dude, I got a copy of this record. I got two. And I was like, dude, that's... I was like, dude, you don't got to send me anything. And he's like, and he's like, oh, well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know? And I was like, okay, man, that's too nice. Well, if you do, just send me the worst of the two copies. I appreciate it. It's too kind. Of course, this dude sent me the cleaner of the two copies. Um, for whatever reason, I always found this beat up. I have found it in the past, but just not a good condition. I have a cassette of this, so I was never like, it's super urgent to, re you know, I need to upgrade this to vinyl so to speak but I, I was definitely on the hunt for it uh cortez the killer is the one on this that everyone knows this is mid 70s um in a gap between neil young without crazy horse and crazy horse without neil young i think as well this is the mid 70s um right in the heyday of the sweet spot of what most people like of neil young so it's the cliche uh, reprise record uh, label, so I'm not going to show that. But you can just see how clean this white jacket is, which is porous. This is not a uh, laminated or glossy cover. This is like a, a, a white album where once they get dirty, they get trashed. And there's no real way to take care of them. So the fact that uh, Zach thought about me and sent this to me was a super nice, well appreciated. I've spun it multiple times uh, since I'm at home. Uh, thank you so much, truly. 
So a tie in from this to that. Now that was the mid seventies. This would have been, I think this would have come out in between on the beach and Zuma, but never got uh, released. I think they described this as a uh, archival release. So I can't recall if it was the 39th or 40th record, but this got released um, during COVID, right about then. I think, you know, if this wasn't the last album I bought, like the dead last album I bought before the accident, it was pretty damn close. So I've had this some time, so it's fresh in the sense that I'm just now showing it, even though I've already owned it. Uh, and I probably don't need to speak on this, because it got a lot of coverage when it hit. But if for whatever reason you're a Neil Young fan and you just never acquired this, uh, this is my quick two cents. I don't know if, like, say, speaking of Zoom and On the Beach, that I'm fond of because it's nostalgic. I've listened to it, and I've digested it, and I really like it, and I like to own it. This is in that same era, but I don't know if it's because I didn't grow up with it or it's not nostalgic that is why I don't appreciate it so much. Um, it, to me, kind of reeks as an album that wasn't released for a reason. Uh, a lot of these are shorter tracks. Nothing really sticks out when I read the playlist here, but nothing sticks out like, oh, that's an amazing song, but also nothing sticks out like, this is terrible, why did I listen to it? I probably need to revisit this in the future, because I thought it was pleasant, I thought it was enjoyable, it's not a, a pricey album. So, but um, it just didn't... It didn't beckon uh, replay after replay. You know, I've been happy to be home and I've been playing a, a, good por a good portion of my collection and really enjoying diving into what I already own. But there are albums that just kind of grab a hold of you and that you kind of just leave near the turntable and you spin, you know, one to three times a week for a month or so before it goes back into uh, filing, so to speak. But this one never grabbed me. Uh, so that's just my two cents if somehow... Uh, you never got with the program when it first hit and maybe you find a used copy of this That'd probably be the way to go because you probably find a used copy for uh, Well under 20 bucks depending on where you live So uh, maybe that's the that's the process and like I say just to keep it moving here If that's the 40th album, then this is the 39th and if it's not that then it's vice versa I can't recall so even though that predates this album by years and time of recording by actual release um, they were back-to-back. Uh, -back. So this is Colorado. The fun tidbit about this, uh, not to start any kind of political discussion, is I went to a local record store a couple months ago, and uh, someone um, took Joe Rogan's side. And, you know, uh, they were just like, well, Neil Young's throwing a tantrum, and he's leaving Spotify, so I don't want anything to do with him. Got rid of their entire Neil Young collection, which is, I think is silly, because, you know, I, I like and... Uh, support uh joe rogan to a certain degree and i also like and um support uh, neil young to a certain degree and i think that's okay you can be friends with people from different views and you can also take portions of people's views from different things and different aspects of life and form your own opinions but uh, i'll avoid getting too political or going on a tirade here but uh colorado now you'd think by the way i broke down the previous album or failed to do so on homegrown that well i didn't grow up with it as, as far as neil young goes so i probably it won't register this had a more immediate connection i've spun this a, a couple more times and in fact uh a lot of this is probably going to get filed away because i've listened to it recently but this one's probably going to get left out for future spins now i'd be lying if i said i ever took advantage of the uh seven inch that it came with it so that's probably one of the reasons why i want to at least listen to this before i file away the rest but this is a 2019 album. I think it came out right before 2020. And um, it was somewhere right near $40. So the fact that this hit the shelf used for uh, 10 bucks plus less than, uh, I was super happy that someone was um, um, got their panties in a wad over uh, Joe Rogan. So it ended up to be... Uh, ended up being for my, advan uh, my advantage. But uh, yeah, that's... It's bedtime. I was just getting this out of the way. So support Eddie. I'll leave some links in here for some channels I discussed. And we'll call this Five Fresh Finds. Like I say, it's a, you know, a stack of records I've never shown in the vinyl community. And a uh, score I figured my friend Eddie would appreciate. Anyways, VC, cheers to you. Love you. Take care. God bless. All that jazz.